Welcome to ESPN's coverage of college football presented by Cars.com. NCAA record 316th straight sellout in Lincoln as Nebraska hosts Michigan State. Both teams in the top 15 of the BCS standings and first place in the Legends Division of the Big Ten on the line. Nebraska has won the toss and elected to defer, so Michigan State will receive the opening kickoff. And Kirk Cousins, the outstanding senior, who led that miracle victory at home against Wisconsin last week, looks to get his Spartans to 4-0 in the conference. Nick Hill and Larry Caper are deep for Michigan State, and it's Hill taking it out. Hill will not reach the 20, brought down at the 17. We look at our impact players, brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Cousins over the last two games, no interceptions, and five touchdown passes. Very talented Michigan State receiver B.J. Cunningham, the number one concern of the Nebraska defensive staff. They always have two defenders assigned to him. You know, speed and instincts of Levante David, you see tied for fourth in the Big Ten tackles. Very active football player. Meanwhile, on the field, a collision and two players are down. One Spartan and one Cornhusker. It's Larry Caper for Michigan State. P.J. Smith for Nebraska. Larry Caper is the third down back for Michigan State. That's an important position. Good to see them both up. See Caper blocking for Hill. And it was two separate collisions that end with two injured players. Now Michigan State football on its 17. It will be Le'Veon Bell starting a tailback. He had more carries than Edwin Baker last week. Baker fumbled on his first attempt. It led to a 14-0 Wisconsin lead. Eventually, Sparty came back to win. Bell had 17 touches, 87 yards on the ground in that game. And he'll get it here on first and 10. And he's twirled to the turf by Cameron Meredith after a gain of five to the 22. Kirk Cousins, a guy that was not highly recruited. Toledo and Western Michigan made him offers after an ankle injury his junior year. He's become an outstanding Big Ten quarterback. Got the school record for career wins. Tell you, Chris, the comfort level of having a grown man run your offense. Right? Michigan State offensive staff and head coach have a lot of confidence in Kirk Cousins. And you can see why the way he's played. There's second and five. It'll be Bell again. And Bell has the first down. Michigan State last in the Big Ten in rushing, but two good plays on the ground to start the game. They are last, but Coach Meyer and I were talking about when you look at the average per carry for Edwin Baker, who we'll see later today, and Le'Veon Bell, they're 4.4 and 5.0 yards per carry. That's effective running the football. And the thing about Le'Veon Bell, when you run angry, you run with power, and he runs angry. He's in a bad mood, and he's in a bad mood. He gets positive yards every single time. He averages five yards a carry. Six rushing touchdowns on the year. First and ten, three straight run plays to Bell, and Bell gets outside and has a first down running over a defender. Andrew Green, it's a gain of 11. You know, we had a great conversation with Bo Pelini and his brother Carl Pelini, the defense coordinator of Nebraska, and getting used to Michigan State offense and Big Ten offense is much different than the Big 12. Big 12 is more of a lateral type offense. He's trying to spread offenses, no huddle. Michigan State is traditional downhill running. What they got to do is get out of that too high look because you don't have enough people to defend the box. You see, you only have seven in the box. First pass attempt of the game. And Cousins with all day to throw going deep into double coverage. Knocked away. It was intended for Keyshawn Martin. Alfonso Dennard and Damian Stafford were there for Nebraska. Nebraska playing a too high safety look. They're getting double coverage on both wideouts. This was a dead play. 
Cousins has to be careful with this. Both, both receivers are double covered, Chris. Well, the point is here, you talk about the weakness of the too high safety coverage against the run. Seven in the box was in your pitcher, but the strength of it is the deep pass because you can high low a deep wide receiver. That's an execution job by Nebraska in a too deep look. Second down and 10. At the Spartan 41, it's Bell. And he broke a tackle at the line of scrimmage and stood up. Andrew Green was getting playing time because of an injury to Stanley Jean Baptiste, who suffered a knee injury in practice this week. They're a little light at that corner position. Third down and five for Michigan State. And the reason why they were successful is because of the eight man box. And that's what you have to pick and choose. And as the game goes on, you'll see them get a feel for what they're trying to do offensively if running the ball. But then down in distance, that's when you determine whether you play two high safeties or one high safety based on formation and down in distance. Play clock at three. Here's Cousins on third and five over the middle. Intercepted. Lance Darrell picks it off. Darrell inside the 30, and then the ball comes out. Cousins tried to save it from going out of bounds, but they ruled that it was out of bounds, so it's Nebraska football. Both leanings known for zone matchup. What that means is you're in the zone, you play a man, you see Thorell not giving up, beating B.J. Cunningham to the point of the throw. Not playing receiver, but playing to the point of the throw and does a good job of finishing. It's beautiful when you finish. How about the hustle by Cousins? Cunningham forced a fumble. He almost saved it from going out of bounds, and there was a Spartan there maybe to fall on. So Nebraska takes over at the Michigan State 25, and Rex Burkhead, who is averaging 107 rushing yards per game, gets about seven there. Our impact players brought to you by Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Taylor Martinez, sixth in the Big Ten in rushing yards per game. He's got nine touchdowns on the ground. Nebraska with the hurry up here, second down and short. Martinez keeping, and he slammed down to the ball, comes out. And they're going to roll him down right at the first down marker at the 15. And there's an injured Michigan State player. It's Jarrell Worthy, our outstanding defensive tackle. The big important part, big, literally big, important part of that defense plays inside defensive tackle. Only has 15 tackles on a year, but you become a disruptive force in there. You allow your other players to make all the plays, and Jerome Worthy, a vital part of the run defense of Michigan State. The one thing about Michigan State's their style of defense is built for this style of offense. You're playing four down with quarters. You're trying to get nine guys involved against an option offense. Chris, that's the way to look at this. In quarters defense, you have an extra checker. Instead of one safety, you're going to have two safeties involved in stopping the option offense. The only way you can do that, they have a lot of trust in the two corners out there. Well, the difference in between, so before we talked about Nebraska running too high, that means the safeties are lined up, Dave, in a pre-snap read in Urban, about 12 to 13 yards. In the quarters coverage, which uh, Urban just described for Michigan State, you'll see those safeties lined up around nine yards because they have to be a factor for the extra ball carrier, which is the quarterback, that against the normal offense you do not account for. Look at how close their safeties will be playing. So for the corners, it's still zone. Correct. It's zone for everybody, but it's a matchup zone, and the corners have to play off and inside. Dan Cameron, a referee. They're going to review further A, where to spot the ball, and B, maybe did the ball come out? You no. saw uh, it hit the ground. He's going to reach for the ball, and the ball will cause it. He's down. He's down. So, no fumble, but where do you spot it? It's pretty close. As to whether he got the first down. As of now, it's third and one. Back in the ball. You're watching college football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. After further review, they have spotted the ball at the 15 yard line, giving Taylor Martinez an extra yard and a Nebraska first down. Trying to get points after a Kirk Cousins interception.
Martinez will hand it off to Burkhead, and he's tackled by Golston, but inside the 10. William Golston was to look at uh, the injured Jarrell Worthy. Golston suspended for punching a Michigan player two weeks ago, but he is back after that one game absence. Did a nice job of closing, but you got to get the ball carry before it gets six positive yards. It's Burkhead again, and this time he's leveled by Golston and Steve Gardner. A gain of about a yard, so another third down and short situation coming up. One thing about Nebraska's offense, they're a package offense. You're going to see him run belly G, belly G give, and belly G option. You're also going to see Taylor Martinez involved in quarterback runs. And then you're also going to see Toss Sweep to the Burkhead, who's the workhorse. G meaning guard pool, lead blocker. Third down and two. Martinez on the option will keep and it's a first down goal at the two-yard line for Nebraska Urban just talked about it G belly option G guard pulling right there you'll see it and what happens is you have two lead blockers for Taylor Martinez I think Urban that the pitch guy is just kind of a distraction right he's gonna if he has two lead blockers he's told to tuck and run it depends how the defensive end plays a defensive end there came up the field great job by Taylor Martinez following the fullback through the B gap they stack three backs behind Martinez and Burkhead trying to go up over the top will not get in he is cut down at the one yard line. It'll bring up second down and goal. Kyler Ellsworth, who was the special teams player of the week in the Big Ten for that block punt against Wisconsin, he made the play there. And this is where you lose Jarrell Worthy again. Not a lot of tackles, but he disrupts a lot of people and makes piles for other guys to make tackles, especially in short yardage situations. Seven play to drive. The previous six have been run plays. Second and goal. It's Burkhead again, and this time he's in. Touchdown, Nebraska. Rex Burkhead, the workhorse for Nebraska. Fantastic player, averaging over 100 yards per game. A downhill physical runner with great acceleration. Offense line did a great job just displacing one of the best defensive fronts in college football, Michigan State. And that was a lead with G. Andrew Rodriguez gets a good kick out block. And I'm going to tell you, one thing to watch for as we go forward, Andrew Rodriguez has a tip when he's pulling. And you'll see it in the replay. He's sitting back away from the other offensive line. And that's something to see if Michigan State can capitalize on to get a read on him, number 63. Nebraska seventh in the country in rushing. Michigan State eighth in the nation in rush defense. The Cornhuskers won that drive. Seven running plays. And they eventually get it in the end zone now, 7 0. As a linebacker, you're looking for tips. Look at this. See how far he's off. You see the difference in alignment in the space? That tells me that he's pulling. He's back for one reason. He gets out, gets around, and gets enough of his body in on the lead back, and you run in the G play, the lead G. And you have two lead blockers. Outstanding execution. Well, Michigan State already down 7-0. They come in trying to beat a ranked team for the third consecutive week for the first time in school history. Remember, they knocked off Michigan, then Wisconsin last week. Now here today against the ranked Nebraska team. How do they do it? Well, continue their formula of success. Playing great, not good defense, great defense. However, you're seeing it get moved by Nebraska's offense line. Great defense, and let your leader quarterback manage the game, Kirk Cousins. Yeah, well, first, Kirk can't throw any interceptions and force the ball. They know coming in, and Nebraska does it. Michigan State likes the short passing game. The matchup today, folks, as we just saw it, and point to Nebraska, is 261 yards rushing per game by Nebraska. 88.9 yards rushing defense for Michigan State right now. Advantage, Cornhuskers. On the return, it's across the 30-yard line is Nick Hill, and Hill breaks the tackle, still going, and all the way to the 38-yard line of Nebraska. Very well blocked by the Michigan State kickoff return team. The guy's untouched through the 50-yard line. It's a double in. You can see the lead blockers kicking in and kicking out. And that's well done. That's going to drive Bo Pelini crazy. You can't allow a change of momentum like that. You have momentum. You need to get you have momentum. You scored. You can't allow that to happen. A 62-yard run back. And so Michigan State with the ball at the Nebraska 38-yard line. 
Edwin Baker in the game at running back. Two weeks ago at 167 yards on the ground against Michigan. Only 15 rushing yards last week. And a pitch to Baker on first and 10. He's going to lose yardage. Spilled by Andrew Green at the 40-yard line. It's a setback of two yards. Well, here they're trying their own version of a G play. The problem is penetration knocks out the lead blocker who was responsible for Green. And you're able to get penetration. And when you penetrate through the line like that, the idea is not for you to make the tackle as a penetrator, but to knock off the lead blockers. Cousins 0 for 2 passing so far with an INT. On second and 12, they'll throw to Keyshawn Martin out on the flat. Martin, an explosive play with four touchdowns in his last two games, but no running room there. Damian Stafford on the stop. It's third and long. It was interesting to see how Carl Pelini and Bo Pelini would come out and play. They're committed, Chris. I don't know if they're going to do this. They're keeping their two safeties back, like you said. They're daring Michigan State to run the football. So Michigan State's coming out throwing. So the weakness of the defense then is the middle of the field as far as passing game. That's somewhere you might want to try to exploit. B.J. Cunningham, favorite target of Kirk Cousins. 48 catches on the year for Cunningham. Third down and seven. Cousins with time, and he's going for Cunningham, and it is broken up. Stafford came over at the last second. Siante Evans on the coverage as well. It's fourth down. Cunningham slow to get up for MSU. That's, that's twice now. Kirk Cousins is really staring down Cunningham. And the Nebraska defensive coaching staff told us they will always have two defenders on Cunningham. And both times you see a guy underneath and a guy over the top. He's forcing that ball, Chris. A nice job by Evans, too, of forcing the high throw. And Stafford, his assignment is you high-low him and exactly what they did. Dan Conroy going for a 52-yard field goal. It's his fourth attempt on the year from 50 or more. So he has the leg for it, but this one, no way. About 10 yards short. Do you agree with that decision? I do, absolutely. Get points when you get points. Way to win. Not to lose. What you'll see from Nebraska's offense, they're a package offense. Very clean in what they do. This is the power lead package where the quarterback's going to read the defensive end. He pulled it that time. This time he's going to give it to his tailback. And then last look off the same type of action as the power lead pass where they give the same exact look as you've seen before with the run. You run a real route with the tailback and an inside release by the X receiver. Excellent play, extra passing game off the power lead series. Very dangerous with Taylor Martinez running it. And Nebraska is starting here on its 35. And a pitch to the running back, Aaron Green, a true freshman. He gets positive yardage before Darquez Denard makes the tackle two yards downfield. How much, guys, of what you just showed us, Urban, did Tom Osborne used to run here at Nebraska? The Belly G series that you're going to see, and we're actually going to diagram for you here in a little bit, is exactly. And a matter of fact, we talked with Coach Osborne. He said he recognized a lot of these same plays. Martinez in trouble, and Golston is there. And William Golston, along with Marcus Rush, take down Martinez for a loss on the play. It'll be third down at about 12. And here you see Golston, good opportunity and getting off the ball. This is a design screen. And when you run this, he's on blocked. So you got to throw the ball or you're going to get <laughs> that's what's going to happen to you. And Taylor knows that he's on block. If it's not there, throw it in the stands for a souvenir. Well, third and 13, movement on the line, flat down. And a long pass over the head of a Nunwell, but another penalty flag. Yeah, Johnny Adams covering, and they might get him for interference. And Michigan State may have been offside as well. You're going to see on the replay where Anunwa is also pushing on him. Anunwa has top of his left shoulder pad on Johnny Adams with his right arm. It's defensive pass interference. The, the pass looked uncatchable. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, number 57 on the defense. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, number five on the defense. That penalty is accepted 15 yards from the previous spot and results in an automatic first down. So third and 13. Remember, Michigan State did not have a penalty last week. 13 two weeks ago, but zero last week. I don't know. 
Is that a catchable pass there? No, absolutely not. So that's, bad that's penalty. A, the thing they could have called is maybe holding. It doesn't matter if it's catchable or not. That's big. Third and 13. Now it's first and 10. And here's Burke head off right side. No running room. Pickleman coming down the line. Made the play for Michigan State. Golston there also. You can see both guys are going back to that penalty day where Adams got in trouble was he grabbed the cloth because the Nunwa also had him and they were playing hand tag. If he didn't grab cloth, I think they would have let it go. Steve Gardner shaking up. He's in there for Chris Norman, the normal starting linebacker who is bothered by a shoulder injury. Chris, let's talk about the Nebraska offense for a minute. The second half against Ohio State, Ohio State who plays excellent defense, couldn't stop them. Who they are is a package offense. They're either the quarterback run package, which we showed earlier, or the belly G series. When they come out and start throwing the ball around a little bit, they struggle. For some reason, this past series, they came out and started throwing the ball a little bit. I'm not quite sure why they're doing that. When they do it out of a number of formations, and we'll see what they call their diamond package, which is three guys in the backfield. All right, so an injury timeout with Nebraska on top, 7-0. Let's check in with Reese Davis now in the studio. All right, Dave, Taco Bell studio update. Another team in contention watching your game very closely in the legends is Michigan. But Caleb Turbush to Gary Bush on the fifth play of the game, 48 yards. Boiler up, 7-0. Denard Robinson answered with a touchdown. They're tied up at 7. So, Reese, you've got Michigan, Iowa, and Nebraska all at 2-1, and one, a game behind Michigan State. If the Spartans were to win this game, they have control of this division. And even if they lose the Big Ten Championship, you'd think they'd get an at-large BCS bowl. Martinez straight ahead to midfield. Picks up just a couple of yards. Pickleman on the stop. So it'll bring up third down and long again. That's a nice job by Pickleman because I'm telling you, if he doesn't get him, he's splitting his safeties. That was a good read by Taylor Martinez, but in order for it to execute, I know it's elementary, you must sustain blocks, and Pickleman did a good job of disengaging. Third down and seven. This is out of their comfort zone. They're off their schedule, as Coach Meyer likes to talk about. They'll drop Martinez and shotgun here. It'll be an option, and Martinez with a... High pitch that Burkhead takes in, and then Johnny Adams pops him out of bounds. Short of the first down by two yards. Fourth and two, what do you do at the 45-yard line? I got Burkhead, I got Martinez, I go for it. Especially right here, you're past midfield. Oh, it looks like he's going to punt it. It's easy to go for it up here in the box, isn't it? When you're midfield. I've been around Chris <laughs> Fielder too long. Yeah, go I... for it every time. <laughs> fourth and eight, fourth and 15. What do you think about Burkhead and Taylor Martinez? Yeah. You're going to get your two yards. <laughs> the Belly G series looks pretty good right now. The double lead blocker we talked about all day. So Brett Maher to punt. Keyshawn Martin is back to receive. And Martin will field it at the seven. He had a little trouble with it. Kept his balance. And Martin down at the 10 yard line. Michigan State football trailing 7 0 first quarter. ESPN's College Football is presented by Cars.com, where confidence comes standard. And in part by Carhartt, cutting prices on jeans, the Carhartt way. Get yours today. Carhartt.com slash find store. Eric Crouch won the Heisman Trophy in 2001. Seven nothing Nebraska as we continue our Dr. Pepper's road to the championship. 0102 season was the last time Nebraska played in a BCS Bowl. That was a Fiesta Bowl. Michigan State since the inception of the BCS has not played in one. Their last Rose Bowl was 1987-88 season. Le'Veon Bell on first down and he's out to the 13 for about three yards. Tackled by Cameron Meredith. Moving forward, Michigan State has to stay patient with the running game. Anytime they're getting seven men in the box, and they're getting that out of 12 personnel. That's one back and two tight ends. Nebraska's going to their two deep. Michigan State has them outnumbered. Just stay patient with it, and you're going to pop some yards. Rex Burkhead has the long touchdown. That's a run after Michigan State 
turned it over. Cousins going for his tight end, and it's off the fingertips of Deion Sims. Normally sure-handed. He has three receiving touchdowns, but he could not pull it in. It's third and seven. A little corner out by the tight end and a guy underneath the tailback in the flat. That should have been caught. That was a well-executed play. You know, I go back to the point that Dave has made throughout the whole weekend that Michigan State over this weekend, for whatever reason, on the road, has struggled mightily. Last week, blown out by Iowa two years last ago. Year. Yeah. Last year, two years ago, lost at Minnesota this weekend. It's got that feel, doesn't it? And on it does. Third down and seven. Cousins in trouble being chased from behind. And Cousins just gets rid of it. It's fourth down. Will Compton was after the quarterback. Cousins had to get rid of it. Josh Williams chasing from behind as well. It's a new look, Chris, we've seen from Nebraska today. We have not seen him show a walk-around style defense. The four defense linemen all standing, moving around, trying to disrupt the protection of Michigan State. And the receivers from Michigan State, you think that's all in Cousins or the offensive line? Nobody is creating separation with the defenders from Nebraska as far as receivers go. Mike Savo will punt to a dangerous true freshman, Amir Abdullah, who's got a kick return for a touchdown this year. And the punt goes off the side of the foot of the kicker, Mike Sadler. See where they spot it. It's going to be at the 40-yard line of Michigan State. Bo Pelini upset. He thought it should have been about the 25. Pelini in his fourth year as the Nebraska head coach has done a terrific job with the Huskers. Four of the nation's top nine teams in action today on the ESPN networks on ABC at 8 Eastern. Heisman candidate Andrew Luck. And Stanford taking on Matt Barkley and USC. College football indeed lives here. Bo Pelini, nine wins in each of his first three years in Nebraska. Got them to the Big 12 title game the last two seasons. Trying to adjust to life in the Big 10 as Martinez is chased and gets rid of the football. Incomplete. Max Bulla had a hold of the quarterback at second and 10. Do you think, Chris, of Michigan State's schedule the last three weeks, who they played, Ohio State, Michigan, and Wisconsin, you wonder if at some point the wear and tear of that schedule is going to start to affect them. They've come out a little bit flat, and they're not playing the same way we saw them play against University of Michigan. And we talked about beating ranked teams in consecutive games. Ohio State, when they played them, they weren't ranked. As Burkhead is lined up in the Wildcat here from Nebraska, and he'll hand it off to Tim Marlow, and Marlow's inside the 30. Racing for the pylon. Out of bounds inside the five. Down at the two. You're only effective when you're productive. Burkhead is productive, so he's effective with drawing Michigan State defenders to him. Look at all the defenders going to him. Well executed on a crack black. You have Michigan State defenders chasing the wrong guy. And Marlow, straight ahead in, full speed ahead. Career long run for him, 39 yards. From the two yard line, it's Burkhead. And he has stepped up at the goal line, did not get in. It'll be second and goal. A handful of Spartans on top of Rex Burkhead, who already has a rushing touchdown in this game. Burkhead's one of my favorite backs I've seen so far this year. He's got great patience, and surprisingly, when you watch him play, he has great acceleration through the line of scrimmage. A tough part of those back. They go with the three back step behind Martinez on second and goal. It's LeGate, the second man throw, and he gets drilled. Uh, the ball came out. Looks like they're going to rule LeGate down, though. Jonathan Strayhorn, the first man to greet LeGate. You don't see the stat guy very often, and Bo Pelini brings this from his high school days at Youngstown Cardinal Mooney. That was their staple offense. Just to add another different formation. That's about seven different formations we've seen from the Cornhuskers. Third down and goal. It's Burkhead. And he bounces off one man and then loses yardage. Great job on the goal line by Michigan State. Marcus Rush, Jonathan Strayhorn, and Nebraska will have to settle for a field goal try. 
Nebraska had first and goal from just outside the one and could not get into the end zone. Well, they tried to run a G play again in the front side guard pooling. That time, penetration knocked off Andrew Rodriguez and created a pile, leaving no space for Burkhead. Brett Maher, one of the best field goal kickers in the country, perfect from inside 50 yards this year, 11 of 11. This is a 20-yard attempt. And it's 10-0 Nebraska. Last week, Mark D'Antonio's team trailed 14 to nothing to Wisconsin, came back to win that game. They're down 10 zip here. Maybe a little bit of momentum after this goal line stand on third down. Nebraska has to settle for a field goal because of this goal line stand by Michigan State defense. Something we've not seen a new wrinkle in the Michigan State defense. That's Bear. The center's covered, both guards are covered. It's all single blocks up front. They tried to pull, and there's too much penetration there, and it disrupts Burkhead trying to score from the two yard line. Well, the reason why it didn't work is because if Rodriguez has a three technique, that's outside shoulder alignment by the defender on him. If you pull, that guy's penetrating right away. You leave a wide open space to get the penetration to slow it down. How about Dark West Denard saving a touchdown, knocking Tim Marlow out of bounds at the two yard line. It'll come out to the 20 for the Spartans. First, Reese Davis. All right, Dave, want to give you a look at what's going on. Other family of networks over on ESPN2, Purdue and Michigan playing. That game has been tight throughout, tied at seven on ESPNU. Florida State has jumped out to a big lead on North Carolina State. It's 10 0. They're going to the second quarter. Halloween weekend in Lincoln. Nebraska on top, 10 0 over Michigan State. Sparty's only loss this year on the road, blown out by Notre Dame. They've beaten Ohio State, Michigan, and Wisconsin in consecutive weeks. First down on the 20 yard line. No running room there for Edwin Baker. Levante David sticking his face in there. Josh Williams as well. Gain of two. I'll tell you what Michigan State is not doing is they're not putting their helmet on anybody. Josh Williams does a great job of coming in. He did a swim technique. That's when you just bring your arm over the defender, avoided the block. Why? Because the Michigan defender, the blocker, put his head down and missed his target. Cousins, one of six passing so far with an interception. He's in shotgun here on second and long. And Cousins has his pass deflected and incomplete. Dennard stepping in front of Cunningham. It brings up third and eight. It was a too high safety look, and the corner beat the receiver to the slant. Once again, Cunningham, his favorite target. You can tell these DBs, they've spent a long time, defensive backs and the coaching staff all week, are working on how to defend Cunningham. Now, when I have a corner doing that, I set him up for the slant go. Slant and go. Something to look forward to as the game progresses. Packed house here at Memorial Stadium. First meeting in Michigan State and Nebraska since 2003, the Alamo Bowl. Bo Pelini's first win. He was the interim coach then. His team trying to shut down Michigan State on third and long. All kinds of movement. Meredith made contact with Chris McDonald, the right guard. So that may go against Nebraska. Offside. Defense, number 34, caused an offensive lineman to react. Five-yard penalty, third down. Big penalty now instead of third and eight, you're in third down and three. The playbook opens up quite a bit once you get in third and three. You have a run-pass threat, not just a pass threat in third and eight, third and nine. Michigan State's got to get this first down, Chris. They have to get going. they got to get their defense off the field. The best way to do that is get a first down right here. And they're not getting any receivers creating any separation. You've got trips down here, which is a man beater. You got BJ Cunningham at the top working one on one. And now Bell motions out of the backfield, leaving Cousins by himself on third and short. And Bell caught it, but he spun down shy of the first down marker by Siante Evans. So it is fourth down and a yard. 
Michigan State will kick it away. I'll tell you, 185 pounds should not be able to throw Le'Veon Bell down like this. And I know he's right on top of him. That's a great job of open field tackling for 185 pounder taking a powerhouse of 235 to the ground. Nebraska coaches were worried about their corners, but they played well so far. They're helping them though. There's always been a safety over the top of their corners, which allows them to be aggressive. Mike Sadler's first punt was awful. Went out of bounds at the Spartan 40. He'll kick it here to Rex Burkhead. And Burkhead under it. Fair caught around the 34 yard line of Nebraska. Join host Reese Davis, analyst Kirk Herbstreet, Craig James to the BCS countdown Sunday night as they unveil the latest BCS poll and analyze who are contenders and pretenders. BCS countdown presented by Tostitos on ESPN Sunday, 8:15 ESPNU, 9 Eastern. Our BCS standings brought to you by Tostitos, LSU, Alabama, both off, setting up that one versus two showdown next week. Oklahoma State moving up to number three. And only two games today involving ranked teams, including this one here. As Martinez's pass is deflected by Rush, incomplete. The other game is Oklahoma-Kansas State, which you can see on ESPN following this one, involving two top ten teams in the BCS standings. Not a bad concept of throwing on first down. By Tim Beck, the offensive coordinator for the Cornhuskers, just to keep the Spartan defense thinking. And on guard. It's only the second pass. 14 running attempts by Nebraska. Martinez and a little flip to the tight end, Ben Cotton, and he may have lost a yard. Rush there again for Michigan State, among others. Not quite Gator executed there. The little double shovel pass. And that was not Aaron Hernandez. That was Ben Cotton. <laughs> One quarter in the books. 10 nothing, Nebraska. Ten nothing Nebraska as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championships. Zero passing yards for Nebraska. They only threw him three times. Eight passing yards for Michigan State. And a ten nothing Husker lead. They have a third down and ten coming up. You would imagine they throw the football here. Taylor Martinez one of three in that completion went for zero yards on a shovel pass to the tight end Ben Cotton. Martinez flushed out of the pocket and gets away from one man and then has to step out at the 32. Strayhorn was chasing, so it's a fourth down situation. Nebraska will punt it. Taylor Martinez and Nebraska offense is not built for third down and eight. Got to do a better job, obviously, on first and second down to get in a manageable third down situation. Brett Maher, who's long as 61. First kick was 39 yards. And Keyshawn Martin, the type of guy who can turn the game around in one play, is back as the punt returner. He's going to signal for the fair catch, though, and Michigan State will start at the 33-yard line. Time for today's AFLAC trivia question. Which Nebraska head coach has the most wins in his first three seasons? And Bob Devaney, who also coached for Duffy Doherty at Michigan State. Tom Osborne. Frank Solich, who, you look at his numbers, saved one or two seasons, did a terrific job in Nebraska. I, I think it's him. Then you have Bo Pelini, who's had a lot of success in his first three seasons. Over the last 12 plays of offense for Michigan State, eight yards as Cousins throws on first and 10, and it's caught over the middle at the 37-yard line by Keyshawn Martin for a gain of a handful. We've got a handful, but still, that's what Nebraska wants to do. They understand they're going to get some success on those short little passes, but the whole job and the whole objective is to eliminate the rack yards, run after catch. And you can see as soon as these guys catch the football, you got a red shirt on top of them. Nebraska showing blitz and a flag down as Bell gets to the 40 yard line. Levante David on the tackle. Let's see what the marker is. Prior to the snap, full start. Offense number 51, five yard penalty, second down. That's full for Noti. 
As you look at Mark D'Antonio, how about Michigan State 17 and 3 in the last 20 games? That's their best run since 1965-66 when they were winning national championships in East Lansing. Their only loss last year in conference play was at Iowa this weekend. They're undefeated in Big Ten play coming into this one. Their only loss overall is against Notre Dame. They'll run down, stutter step, and then powers forward in the 39-yard line. So it'll bring up third down at about five or six. Josh Williams there for Nebraska. It's amazing to me, Chris. We talked to the coach Pelini, the defense player, Carl and Bo. They're, they're committed to playing two safeties deep. That means you're a gap short in the run game, yep. and one or two of your defense linemen have to two gap. And that's hard to do now. You have to really spend a lot of time on technique. You better be a powerful defense alignment, especially against a Big Ten offensive line like Michigan State. That's why they got six yards on that carry. Michigan State needs its captain quarterback, Kirk Cousins, to make a play here on third and four. Cousins steps up, and he does make a play, running for the first down to the 47-yard line. It's a gain of eight. Had a little pick play there. Michigan State, and you can see that Nebraska does a good job. Watch number 11, Andrew Green. See him avoid the pick. He's playing man-to-man -man on a receiver. Big Deion Sims tries to pick. Kirk Cousins, as Bourbon said, he's a man. He's going to make good decisions nine out of ten times. Tuck it, get the first down, stay on schedule. And a wildcat formation here. Maybe on Bell. Lined up as the quarterback, and he's going to hand it off. Keyshawn Martin had a rushing touchdown last week, but no gain here because of Alfonso Detter. Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, I'm trying to figure out if this is a Big 12 game or an SEC game, but Missouri and Texas A&M, watch this run by James Franklin. Flushed out of the pocket. Now, A&M's had trouble on defense. There are three Aggies that missed him. Let's make it four, five, touchdown. Missouri scored again. Now they're up 14-7 on A&M. Reese here, it's 10-0 Nebraska. Michigan State trying to put together a drive. Kirk Cousins just three of nine passing with an interception. He pumps and goes deep here. In the double coverage, knocked away by Dennard. B.J. Cunningham again the intended receiver. A safety, Damian Stafford was also there for the Cornhuskers. Another too high safety look by Nebraska. A good call by Michigan State, but better reaction by the corners from Nebraska. They've been jumping the slant route. They came back with a slant and go. The safety came over the top. You call that overlap by the safety. They're playing very well on defense right now for the basketball. All you have to do is send somebody down the middle of the field because you have the safety cheating to Cunningham every play. They're cheating his side. If you can get somebody down the middle to split the safeties, you're all right. That puts all your pressure on your inside linebackers. Play clock at one. And Michigan State calls a timeout. Cousins was signaling for Le'Veon Bell time to come out. in motion. Michigan State. Bell couldn't hear him because of the noise here at Memorial Stadium. So the Spartans, with the play clock down to one, burn a timeout. We know. A week after the Hail Mary, Kirk Cousins to Keith Nickel as Michigan State knocked off Wisconsin. The Spartans down 10 0. Early second quarter on the road in Nebraska and faced with a third and 10. Kirk Cousins, 3 of 10, passing with a pick. He'll let it fly here. Cousins with time. Martin in the middle of the field. Has the first down inside the 40. Tackled at the 39. It's first and 10. Michigan State. Little hot by the tight end. Kirk Cousins does a great job. Steps up in the pocket. Delivers a strike. And gets the two high with safeties helping on receivers. The weakness of the defense is the middle of the field. And that's what you saw. Michigan State saw that, and that's where they attacked. Edwin Baker in the game, a tailback. He's fumbled in each of the last two games. He'll get a carry. On first down, going low is Ciante Evans, the corner. A little shaken up as he made that tackle. Minimal gain on the play. You see Ciante Evans, Edwin Baker's vision was not in line with the open hole. He made up his mind before he got that ball to cut it back. There was a hole if he would have stayed play side where he received the ball. 
And see Siante Evans. Head on the knee. Good try. Siante, you'll be back. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. And AT&T, get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. Some of the great black shirts, including Indomitian Sue, Heisman finalist in 2009. Siante Evans shaken up, so he's out of there. Two corners banged up for Nebraska. Second and long for Michigan State, and a pitch to Baker. Great open field stop by Will Compton. Otherwise, that was set up for a long game. And now it's third and long for MSU. Not typical. Bo Pelini defense and numbers statistically two years ago they led the nation in, in, in total defense the one thing they do they run to the ball you saw great effort there by Compton remember they told us too they're getting used to the downhill running of Big Ten football as opposed to more lateral running in the Big 12 where well, they came out playing today Michigan State converted to third and ten on this drive this is third and nine and Cousins with time and a long throw that's off target intended for Keyshawn Martin. It's fourth down. It would be about a 55 or 56 yard field goal try. And it looks like the Spartans will punt the ball. Cousins just 4 of 12 passing for 27 yards and that interception on the opening possession. Just the fifth pick he's thrown this year. And now can Mike Sadler has had two punts that weren't very good try to pin Rex Burkhead and Nebraska deep. Angling it toward the near side and into the end zone. So Sadler was over three. Nebraska will start this drive on its 20. Our conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper 10. Possible if Nebraska wins to have four teams with one loss in the Legends division. They all play each other coming up. Michigan, Iowa next week. In the Leaders division, in theory, Penn State controls its own destiny, but they still got to go to Madison. They still have to go to Columbus, and they play Nebraska in Happy Valley. Yeah, I was kind of quiet six in the morning. Here's Burkhead, and he's grabbed by Anthony Rashad White for a gain of a couple. Steve Gardner, a linebacker for Michigan State, done for the day with a stinger. He was in there for Chris Norman, a starting linebacker who's been battling a shoulder injury. A lot of backups in on defense on both sides because of injury. Yet the defenses are the story so far as Martinez keeps, and he's in trouble. Sworn at the 24-yard line. Ellsworth leading the way, so it's third down and six. You know, Chris, I've been there as an offensive coach. Things you just can't get it going on first down. Next thing you know, you got second and nine and third and eight. And you're just trying to dial up a play and get a package going on first down. That's what's going on right now on both Nebraska and Michigan State. Bullock may have been offside, and there was also movement by Nebraska. Defense. Offside. Number 40. Five-yard penalty. Third down. So again, a week after no penalties against Wisconsin, penalties have been big so far. That's the second first down for Nebraska because of a Michigan State. Actually, it's not a first down, just short, but at least you go from third and six to third and one. And now Burkhead and Martinez feet become a factor. Burkhead. Makes a great move in the backfield to pick up the first down. He was dead to rights with Marcus Rush. And then Bola makes the tackle after he got the first down. It's a power lead play where the quarterback's going to read the front side defensive end. That was a mistake, Chris. He should have pulled yeah. the ball. Defensive end came up the field. One of their base plays. And Burkhead has just enough shake 
to make the initial contact miss. Here's Burkhead. Four 100-yard gains in his last five, but nowhere to run there. Pickleman, an underrated defensive tackle in the Big Ten, made the play for a loss. Well, Michigan State was stunned a little bit early on, had a little trouble slowing that Nebraska offense down with the first touchdown, but adjustments, that's the key. When you see a good, well-coached football team adjust in midstream instead of the halftime, you know you're well-coached and you have talented players. Still no passing yards for Nebraska as Burkhead gets leveled by Danikos Allen at the 35-yard line. It's a gain of six, so 37 coming up. And got Nebraska offensive lineman Jamarcus Hardrick, their starting left tackle shaken up. Oh, he was calling for a sub and then just fell down at the 34-yard line. Chris, where both teams are failing right now are not on third down numbers are horrible. Where they're failing is on first down. You know, we always talk about staying on schedule. Both teams, I'm not sure I've seen a quarter and a half like this that we've done this year. Both teams on first down, I mean, they're failing. They're talking either lost yardage play or one or two yards and a second along every time. Do you credit the defense or is it all just bad offense so far? Defense, in my opinion, both both teams are playing above and beyond defensively after the adjustments. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Reese Davis. All right, Dave, Sports Center right now presented by Discover Card. Rain has washed out the Sprint Cup qualifying this weekend in Martinsville. Carl Edwards is going to be on the pole because he's the points leader. You can see that race Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. And Tom Juritz, the athletic director at Louisville, has declined to pledge a long-term commitment to the Big East, saying he has to do what's best for his university. So that means things may not be done in terms of uh, realignment, the Big East and some of the other conferences. There's Hardrick, the left tackle, nailed up on by both Burkhead and a Spartan. It's the number one reason why offensive linemen get injured. So now it's third down and seven. Again, Martinez has one completion, but it went for zero yards. It's third and seven. Jeremy Searles, who started 14 games last year, is in the game with left tackle. Martinez throw is in the dirt about five yards in front of the intended receiver. Danikos Allen at pressure. It's fourth down. Blitzing is the signature of the Spartan defense, and I can promise you when it's third and five plus, they will bring pressure. That's what Pat Narduzzi does. That's who he is. That's what their team is. Allen may have gotten a piece of that pass. All focus right now, Dave, has to be on first down. Michigan State has to, in the next series, get positive yards and get in very second and manageable situations. Maher's punt to Keyshawn Martin. And Martin at the 30-yard line. Spins out of the tackle but can't keep his feet down at the 37. See if the Spartans go back to pounding the football, which they did early, or if they let Cousins sling it when we come back. Time to answer today's Athletic Trivia question. Which Nebraska head coach has the most wins in his first three seasons? Is it Tom Osborne? No, it's Frank Solich. 31 wins in his first three years. Although Osborne had a pretty good run here. National championships. Led the nation in rushing 11 different times. Now the athletic director here in Lincoln. First down Michigan State on its 37-yard line. And play action for Cousins. All day to throw, everybody covered. Now Cousins got to get rid of it. Took a sack instead. You don't see that normally from your senior quarterback, three-time captain, Stein Cooler, tracked him down for a five-yard loss. We've been talking all day about the strengths and weaknesses of two high coverage. The strength is on first down play action pass. Your two receivers are doubled. There's not an open receiver all over the field. Throw it away then, right? Burn it. Burn it. Live to see another day. You run the ball is what you do. It's that simple. That's too high. Run the ball and stay patient with it. Between these two teams, we've had five completions and six punts. Second and long. Now they will run the ball. Baker with a lane, and he's cut down by Compton at the 41-yard line. So he got eight of it back. It's third down. Regardless of the coverage, regardless of the defense, 
If you cannot create separation between the receiver and defender, you're not going to be able to throw anywhere anytime. And that's right now, Nebraska's athletes are beating Michigan State's athletes. Third and eight for Cousins. And he'll throw it deep into coverage again. And it is knocked away again by Dinner. Keyshawn Martin, the intended receiver. What's happened to the underneath passing? And we've seen a lot of shots into double and triple coverage. Two, once again, on too high coverage, you basically eliminate the outside receivers. The weakness of too high coverage is to match up the linebackers against the inside receivers. For some reason, we're not seeing Michigan State try to take advantage of that. Third pass breakup by Dennard, all on deep passes. And again, that drive got off to a bad start. First down by both teams, brutal so far in this game. And Dula will field it and muff it. Trying to scoop it up, he does. Oh, and he gets tagged back at the 16 yard line. Isaiah Lewis, who has two interceptions for touchdowns this year, makes a big play on special teams to pin Nebraska inside the 20. Several key conference matchups featured today on the ESPN networks on ESPN at 8 Eastern. Can Wisconsin bounce back from that heartbreaking loss on the Hail Mary in Michigan State? Now playing in Columbus against Ohio State. And Ohio State coming off the bye week had two weeks to prepare for the Badgers. You think Wisconsin bounces back and wins that game, guys? Nebraska running here on first down. Burkhead out to the 21 for a game of four. One thing about Ohio State, they have one of the best defenses in America. You think they beat Illinois two weeks ago with completing one ball. That tells you the quality of the defense that Ohio State's playing right now. I think that it's going to be a lot closer than a lot of people think. If it's close at home, Ohio State has a good chance of knocking them off. Martinez audible in here. Second down and six. Martinez, and he's going to throw it deep. Jump ball, and it's intercepted by Johnny Adams. Adams bringing it back inside the 35. Adams staying in bounds before he's slammed down by Hardrick. Kenny Bell, the intended receiver, and Adams with his first interception of the year. Just forcing a, just forcing a throw downfield here, jump ball. You just don't need to be doing that right now, Chris, if you're if you're Nebraska. You don't want to do that. And here's take, Taylor Martinez. We saw this earlier. He steps with his left foot not to the target. He's throwing off his back foot. And look at his shoulder tilt. I don't understand that throw. I don't understand the call. You're up 10 nothing. There's nothing wrong with run the ball, punt and play defense, punt and play defense, punt and play defense, score when you're at field position. That's a pretty darn good game plan. Michigan State takes over inside the Nebraska 30-yard line. We're going to run Levy on Bell, and Nebraska able to string it out. Bell hit by several Huskers and gets to about the 27 for a short game. Lance Durrell, who had an interception earlier, made the initial hit on Bell. The one advantage Nebraska's had, Michigan State had three tough games right in a row. Nebraska... Got after Minnesota pretty good last week and had a chance probably to look a little bit ahead towards Michigan State and get ready for this offense because they are all over them on defense. Play action and a handoff. End the round to Keyshawn Martin. He scored on a similar play against the Badgers. He gets to the 21 for six yards. Levante David brings him down. It's third and three. Chris, you're definitely in two-down territory right here. You need to get close to a first down. I pound the ball, and you have to get. They're going to play two high safeties again and double your receivers. You have to challenge that offense line and go get your first down. Well, yeah, I'm coming in bizarre world because if I don't get the first down on the road when I'm in the red zone, I get points and make it a one possession game. Conway's already missed a field goal, but that was a, a 52 yard attempt. They spread it out here for Cousins in the gun. Third down and three. And it's a pitch that almost got intercepted. Bell trying to muscle to the marker appears to have the first down. Boy, Andrew Green stepped in front of that pitch, and if he gets his hands on it, he's gone. Well, this is game plan. I mean, Andrew Green is coming with pressure. 
Kirk Cousins never sees him. And it's a game of inches as football has always said, and a nice job of focusing on the football by Le'Veon Bell. But I don't think you need to do that. We talk about the weakness of cover two and throwing the balls in the middle of the field. Guess where the weakness is the run defense? In the middle. That's where you attack the running game. But they're, they're committed to this three wide receiver look right now. And Bell, at 225 pounds, able to move the pile and get the first down. Cousins to the air on first and 10. Nowhere to go with the ball. Cousins throwing back to the end zone and out of bounds. And now a flag comes down. There was some contact in the end zone between Cassidy, the safety, and the wide receiver, Keyshawn Martin. I'm not sure what the call could be here. That was not a catchable. It could be defensive holding. Yeah, that's about it. Call, that's yeah. about it. They're attacking the strongest part of the defense, Chris, every time. The vertical routes are <laughs> dead. I don't know. I so mean, why do it? Well, I'm sure, there, I'm sure there's other parts to it that they're looking at. Boy. Pass interference. Defense, number eight. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Boy, that, that's twice that there was an uncatchable pass that pass interference was called on the defense. I mean, Cousins is throwing this away. This isn't anywhere near Keyshawn Martin or Cassidy. Cassidy down here. Take a look. Number eight. Again, we see the concept of high-low coverage. Yeah, he held him a little bit, but look where the ball ends up. About five yards out of the end zone. Yeah, he's just throwing that away. All right, it's first down and goal for Michigan State. First down has been a big problem for both these teams. And you wonder what they're talking about here. They're still discussing the previous ruling. First down has been miserable, though. Huh? Michigan State averaging about three yards per first Correction. down. Correction. The foul is for defensive holding. Okay. That makes owing sense. to the fact that the ball was uncatchable, it is enforced half the distance from the previous spot with an automatic first down. I think you could buy the hold. There was contact in the end zone. But again, the ball was way out of bounds. You see Cassidy's in good position. Keyshawn Martin coming back to help his quarterback, and with the left hand, he grabs down. Now, look at the difference in yards, though. I mean, that's a big difference. A nine-yard line is a lot more difficult to work, obviously, and you can't pick up a first down. So you have four yard, four downs to get eight and a half yards. I'll tell you, Dave, you had 85,000 people wearing red at me. That was an uncatchable ball. I'm glad he <laughs> scored that away. Bell is the running back. Unbalanced look, running to your right. Bell trying to get outside. Compton makes the play in the backfield, the loss of three. Third year starter, Will Compton, with his third tackle for a loss of the year. This is just being smart. I mean, I'm calling a play before because you have an unbalanced. There are too many guys to run the ball over here. The ball's coming this way. Watch Compton, number 51, play the play, use his hands and his defender to screen the offensive blocker from getting to him and show a nice little burst in the good open field tackle. As you said, you're inside the 10. You can't get a first down. Now it's second and goal at the 11. Let's see if they work the middle of the field. Once again, stay away from the outside. It's a too high safety look again. Cousins throwing middle of the field, and that one was too hot to handle for B.J. Cunningham. It's third and goal at the 11. So do you throw it here, or do you try to get positive yardage running the ball to set up something manageable, or are you just thinking three points? Uh, I think you think three points. I think you take your shot in the end zone. What you might want to do is go trips to one side, B.J. Cunningham to one side, isolated away from the trips, and you throw a fade jump ball to him because of his ability to leap, and he goes up and has a good job of catching the ball high in the air. Well, that's how they're setting up. That's what I would do right there. Yeah, but Chris, he's double. And right here, buddy. Where you look for Keyshawn Martin. He's a number three receiver to the field. And Cousins in trouble. Gets rid of the pass and it's intercepted and then dropped. Stafford had it and he was probably thinking touchdown. He never had full possession though, so the ruling is incomplete and it's fourth down. Cousins almost threw his second interception. They were trying to get isolation. Keyshawn Martin on a backer. 
Nebraska might have got away with a little bit of a hold there. That's what Cousins was uh, steamed about. He was talking to the official, thought that Keyshawn Martin was held. It's the matchup zone principles by Bo Pelini. It's something that he believes in. It's zone coverage with man principles. Executed perfectly so far this game. Conrad a 28 yard field goal try. And Michigan State on the board. Mark D'Antonio avoided disaster there. Almost an interception by Stafford. A combined 166 yards of offense and 27 yards passing. None for Nebraska, but the Cornhuskers lead it 10-3. And they'll get the ball back with all their timeouts. The points for Michigan State coming off of Martinez interception. Nebraska has seven points following a Cousins interception. And Kirk lived dangerously, almost threw a couple picks. On that last Michigan State drive, they did get three points. Muma kicking for a touchdown this year. Here he is across the 15. Abdullah to the 25, and the ball comes out, but it goes out of bounds, so it'll remain Nebraska football. Tyler Ellsworth, the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week, forced it out, but it stays Nebraska ball. Here's Reese. Dave, coming up on the Bud Light Halftime Report, another team in the Big Ten Legends, Michigan, had a scare from Purdue early. Wolverines have created some space. We'll show you how they were able to do that. Aggies taking on the Tigers, Big 12 for now, and Texas A&M starting to flex that offensive muscle. And Dr. Lou and Mayday go head-to-head. -head. How will Andrew Luck handle the matchup against USC tonight? Race on first down, Rex Burkhead. Gets out to the 32-yard line for about four yards. That's a good play on first down today. Both teams at two yards or fewer on first down. Second and six, Chris. Here we go. Now you now you can call a play. Not Nebraska. Burkhead straight ahead. Got the first down. That'll stop the clock to reset the ball. And they also have all their timeouts. I mean, they're, they're perfectly happy. If they pop one, great. If not, they can't throw it down the field. Third straight run for Burkhead. Trying to get outside, and then he swarmed at the 42-yard line. Golston leads the charge. Stayed in bounds. Clock running. Now a timeout called by Nebraska. Two remaining for the Cornhuskers. Seeing Hardrick number 50. You see him right here on your screen, limping. See if that affects him as the game progresses. Toughen it out. And with just over four races left, Carl Edwards looks to overcome his Martinsville drought and maintain the points lead while Kevin Harvick tries to rebound with his second straight win at the tiny half mile. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues in Martinsville Sunday, 1 Eastern on ESPN. Let's talk about the situation here. You have 53 seconds, two timeouts. Taylor Martinez is built for the option game. The Belly G, the quarterback run series, do you risk putting the ball up in this situation, trying to get down and get a field goal? I'm not sure I do that. Maybe you go regroup, let's come back out. You have the lead, you're 10 to three up. Let's let's not do something crazy here. Now, when you had Tebow or Alex Smith, you'd let it fly, right? You'd run your offense, but but what about with a quarterback who, who maybe wasn't as talented throwing the ball? Well, just this whole situation. I'd, I'd get out of this thing with a 10 3 lead. Second and eight, 53 seconds and two timeouts to work with for Nebraska from its 42. And a quarterback draw. Martinez upended at midfield by Isaiah Lewis. Close to the first down. They're not going to risk anything by throwing the football. It may look like they're going to throw it. They spread everybody out to run a quarterback draw. They gave him a first down. From the spot, didn't look like a guarantee. But they gave him a first down. Now the clock is running. Nebraska not set with its personnel, so they have to call their second timeout. 41 seconds remaining in the half. Seven point Nebraska lead. Back in Lincoln, Dave Pash, Urban Meyer, Chris Spielman, Quinn Kesnick down on the field. Bo Pelini squad leading 10 3. Let's take a look at the last play. It was ruled a first down. Uh, Martinez with a quarterback draw. He's got to get to the 49-yard line. And uh, where he lands, it looked like the ball was right at the 50, and that's where they spotted it. 
They did give him a first down. One timeout remaining. They're about 15 to 20 yards away from field goal range for Nebraska. Yeah, Brett Maher has got a huge leg. And now there, there may be a challenge here, no? Delay, Delay of game. game. Five yard penalty on the offense. Remains first down. I thought D'Antonio might challenge that spot, but uh, how do you have a delay out of a timeout? There's no, nothing more frustrating for a coach. And when that penalty was caught, I was looking right at that man right there, Bo Bellini. He just bent down, head to the ground. It's frustrating because Taylor Martinez thought it was gone when he's supposed to be under center. And a drop back pass here. And Martinez has an incompletion. Brandon Kinney has really struggled with drops. 44 catches last year, only 11 this year. Could not make the catch. So if, if you're Michigan State and, they, and let's say Nebraska runs it, do you stop the clock and call timeout? I think you're happy going in to, to, uh, on the road in Lincoln with a 10-3 deficit and going to make your adjustments. Quarterback run, Martinez goes nowhere. Urban, do you call timeout if you're Michigan State? I let this thing run out. That was, looks like that's what Sparty's going to do. We'll see what kind of a play Nebraska runs here. It's almost like both sides just want to hit restart, you know. Oh, yeah, man. What a key draw here. You don't dare put this thing in the air. And now a timeout called by Michigan State Time with out. four seconds left. Interesting. Well, after winning on a Hail Mary against Wisconsin last week, perhaps Mark D'Antonio wanted to keep his team from giving up a Hail Mary at the end of the half. So he calls timeout with four seconds left to get everybody set on defense for what should be the final play of the half. I understand that. And, you know, you have to watch the corners as they go into victory formation. And instead, uh, no Hail Mary. Martinez just takes a knee. How about zero passing yards, yet you lead a team that's beaten Ohio State Michigan and Wisconsin in consecutive weeks. 10-3 Nebraska on top. Here's Quint Kessner. Coach, how do you best describe the play of your offense right now? Well, we got to make plays. We got to be able to throw the football more effectively and catch the ball as much as anything. And then I thought we started out running the ball effectively. We haven't been able to run it since then. So we got to play. Seems like they're committed to a, a too too high safety look. Well, what are your yeah, best options? Cover two and get in the corners, sink in the corners underneath the, the wide receivers. You know, we got we got to just play. You know, we got to go in and stop making and stop beating ourselves. Got to find some rhythm. Thanks, coach. Well, penalties hurt. I remember two weeks ago against Michigan, they had all those penalties, then none last week. They're down 10-3 to Nebraska at the half as we go to Reese Davis in the studio and the Bud Light Halftime Report. Welcome back to College Football on ESPN, presented by Cars.com. Cousins throw, and it is caught. Touchdown, B.J. Cunningham. Robinson throws a pick, intercepted by Isaiah Lewis to the house. Cousins chucks it to the end zone. Caught. Michigan State's caught it on a rebound. Hold on. Instant replay. We'll take a look at this. After further review, touchdown, Michigan State. Can Michigan State close out October? with a big win on the road. Down 10-3 to Nebraska at the half. Kirk Cousins struggling in the first half. There's a number of reasons why he's struggling. One is there's no separation created for the Michigan State wide receivers against the Nebraska pass defenders. And they're not in sync, their timing's off, and it's all due to the fine job of Carl Pellini and Nebraska Cornhusker black shirts. The one thing about Nebraska defense, Chris, they're not doing anything we didn't see on tape. They're not come up with some unusual blitz package. It's a too high structure, and they're forcing Michigan State to either run the ball or work the inside routes against a too high defense. Kevin Muma kicking off. Amir Abdullah will take a knee, and it will come out to the Nebraska 20. Our game track is brought to you by Bud Light. Nebraska with zero passing yards, but a seven-point lead. Rushing yards over 100. Michigan State for a full game gives under 100 per contest. Good for eight best in the country. I just arrowed the average first down, which both teams then puts you in bad position on third down. So something to watch as we move forward through this uh, broadcast in this game. 
is who's going to win first downs because I promise you there will be a direct correlation to success on third downs if there's success on first down. Rex Burkhead with 50 rushing yards. Taylor Martinez will hand it to him on first down and Burkhead is grabbed from behind by Pickleman after a gain of a couple. I will say this, so I've been, every coach has been in this situation. Your game seven, game eight, they have a lot of film on you. You can tell both these defenses are almost calling out the plays before they're running them. You almost like to see Nebraska go to their diamond formation or get a little bit of their option no, game and play. We have not seen the diamond yet. That's where they have three backs in the backfield with Martinez, who's hit by Worthy, and then the late pitch to Burkhead. And Burkhead makes a terrific move and gets three yards. Golston on the stop, but that play could have been a disaster. And Burkhead gets three yards. Well, first of all, the snap's behind him. Anytime it's a speed option, you want the ball out in front. And the left guard allowed penetration and forced Martinez to pitch off the wrong defender. Let's see if Martinez throws here. He does have one completion, but it went for zero yards. He's one of six passing. I'm not surprised to see a QB draw. No, Martinez going to throw, and it's a long pass that's caught for a first down by Tim Marlowe. He had a big play in the first half, a 39-yard run that set up a field goal. Big ovation for the Nebraska Cornhusker crowd. He, he did get that left foot. Everyone's talking about it all day. The left foot did point to the target, and when he's in line, he can deliver the football. And now six total passing yards for Nebraska. Martinez hit by a rush and spilled for a loss back at the 28. A three-yard setback. Marcus Rush, a redshirt freshman, has got three tackles for a loss in this ball game. There is a penalty marker down on the far sideline. Actually, two. One in the backfield, then one downfield at the 39-yard line. There's a little tussle out there between a wide receiver and a defensive back. Denard was in the middle of it, number 31. After the play, personal foul. Defense, number 31. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that's the third time today that a penalty by Michigan State has kept the drive alive for Nebraska. Well, it's a mental penalty. I'm watching Kenny on here doing a good job. His hands inside, he's doing what he's told to do. He's swinging at him, and he's throwing punches. Wasn't he there? Well, I think he's frustrated because Kenny had inside on the breastplate. So that's where you want your hands in good holding position. Denard was frustrated. Burkhead dumped by Rashad White after a gain of two or three. He's got to read that defensive end. That's one again where you have to pull the football off that zone read. Once again, Michigan State is giving them hard, a hard look. The defense end is not making a, a sharp decision what to do. 300 slowing down the quarterback. Martinez will throw on the defender way off of Brandon Kinney who gets a first down. Johnny Adams with quite a cushion. And they're into Michigan State territory. Actually, Dave, it's the route. He's going to push him up the field, then come back. He sells the fade, does a great job pushing the vertical, and comes back on bump and run coverage. So first down at the 42-yard line. And Martinez dropping, looking to throw. And he had a man downfield. Instead, went underneath to Ben Cotton, the tackle made by Lewis. There is a receiver, though, downfield. Coming back, looking at the quarterback, saying, hey, I was open. Now, remember that play they ran against Ohio State, the little play action? Off the option look. That's going to come back to it against Michigan State sometime in this ballgame. There's a number who is the receiver downfield. Burkhead, there's a flag down. Dead ball foul here. Movement by Nebraska. Full start. Offense, number 50. Five yard penalty. Second down. You know, we're seeing offense coordinators Tim Beck, Tim Beck's halftime adjustment. He's coming out letting Martinez throw the ball a little bit, which is unusual and something they certainly didn't do in the first half. Martinez on the year, only a 55% completion rate. He's thrown either 21 or 22 passes in every single game. As you see, the diamond formation by Nebraska, those three running backs. And here's Martinez faking it to Aaron Green, and then you being chased down by Rush and out of bounds inside the 45-yard line. So it looks like no gain or maybe even a loss. So why they came to that? Because what happened earlier in the series, Marcus Rush made a play from his backside end on Martinez. They were thinking that he's crashing down hard, so they tried to set it up with the play action. 
Marcus Rush not to be fooled. So third down and 11, that should get positive yardage. They were in second and 13 because of the penalty, now third and 11. Here comes the pressure now. You see the corners are up playing tight coverage. It could be backing out of it. Option. Martinez will wait and then pitch to Burkhead, and he gets the first down. Boy, it was Kenny Bell out there with a great block on a defensive back, and that sprung Burkhead for a first down. Just speed option to the top of the screen. He's going to pitch off the defensive end. Carries it to the second level. Really loaded option. They blocked the defensive end. Great execution option by the Taylor Martinez. It'll be an option team. The receivers have to block. From the 29-yard line, Martinez taking it himself and ripped down by Johnny Adams at the 25. Gain of about four yards. It's interesting. Any time that Nebraska has somewhat of a play, Pat Narduzzi, the defensive coordinator, is going to counter with a corner blitz. Nobody in America corner blitzes more than Michigan State Spartans. 11 play of this drive for Nebraska. The pitch to Burkhead, now the reverse to Kenny Bell. And Bell trying to get around Adams, he does. Trying to dive for the first down, but they'll spot him short at the 21. It'll bring up third down. And Taylor Martinez missed an opportunity to spring Kenny Bell. Watch Taylor Martinez's head come around. Now he's going to look inside to get a block. Now watch if he looks outside to Johnny Adams, he has a chance to get a block. He stayed inside, and Johnny Adams did a good job of angling out, knocking Kenny Bell out. And now Adams is shaken up. Second team all Big Ten corner a year ago. Very good player for Michigan State. Tell you, Tim Beck's come out in the second half, very aggressive, letting Taylor Martinez throw the ball, running some option, a trick play in the red zone. He's opened it up a little bit in the second half here. Right. It's third down and really about two based on where they've spotted the ball at the 21. What, what's your play call here if you're in Nebraska? Well, Chris and I were watching film yesterday, that diamond formation, the two tailbacks and Burkhead in the game at the same time. The power read, the power read keep, and then the play action, that's a that's a lethal package for some reason. Nebraska has not gone to that today. Remember, they did not go to that formation until the second half against Ohio State, and that's when they had the, all the success of running the football against the Buckeyes. Couldn't stop them. They were up and down the field against Ohio State in that formation. And they came back from 27-6 down in a night game, first Big Ten home game against Ohio State, ended up being the biggest comeback in school history. And we have three wide receivers and they're going to a little bit of a pistol look. Either setting up for the option or getting Burkhead the ball deep in the backfield so he can read the open hole and pound forward for two yards. You know, Dave, they, they feel so good about the three true freshmen, Abdullah, Green, and her, the three tailbacks. They just haven't been playing it very much today. And they just have Burkhead back there with Martinez under the center. Now he'll drop into that pistol look. Third down and about two. Martinez will throw. And it's a first down grab by Kinney. And he is out of bounds at the nine-yard line. It's first and goal. And big repeater of plays, Tim Beck. The same thing, press coverage. So they fake the fade, and you got to have patience if you're Kinney. Watch it. He's going to fake the fade, do a good job, stop and come back. Taylor Martinez with a great read and on target with the football. Here's Burkett. And Burkett through a seam, takes on a defender, runs him over. Trent Robinson got the worst of that. And it'll be second and goal from just outside the one-yard line. This is a gene toss. Here comes the pulling guard leading Burkett. Trent Robinson's going to come up and not wrap his arms. If he wraps his arms, he gets him at the five. They go hurry up, Burkett. And the ball comes out. They're going to rule him. Well, one official said he was down. Another official said it's Michigan State ball, and they're going to give it to the Spartans. Burkhead fumbles on the one. Recovered by Kyler Ellsworth. One official. The linesman said he was down. Let's see. Where's his knee? Hard to tell. And is it a touchdown? I think it's a touchdown. He was down, and the ball crossed the plane. It should be six points based on that look. As soon as the ball crosses the plane, remember the ball doesn't have to hit the ground. It just has to cross the plane. From that look, the first look that we saw, put six up for Big Red. The previous play is under further review. 
And he's not down there. His hand was down, but he wasn't down. But then it looked like the ball crossed the plane as he hit the ground. And once it crosses the plane in his possession, it's over. It's a touchdown. It's either touchdown or he's down. The ball down right before the, See right the there. goal line. I think it's a touchdown. The ruling of the field, though, is a fumble. Michigan State ball. Just think about the four instant replay. That's going the other way. Yeah. That, that can win or lose a game. Well, how about last week? Instant replay won the game for Michigan State. The Hail Mary was caught by Nickel, but the ruling in the field was he was short of the goal line. Instant replay overturned that and gave the Spartans the win. Watch this not only. What a deflating moment. If, if they call the call that we think they're going to call, Instead of a turnover, we're talking about six points. An instant replay in college, every play is being reviewed. And if, if they're not sure, they buzz the official on the field and they stop the play. Watch this place explode. I mean, from the replay that we saw, it looks clearly to be six points. Got to be indisputable video evidence to overturn the ruling in the field. That appeared to be conclusive. Well, it's going to be a touchdown. That'll be 17 to 3. And Spartans better get this thing going offensively. You see Burkhead right here, right there. The ball is in the end zone. I mean, it's a he's down. Yeah. He's down. The ball was in the end zone. And, and that could be why they're taking some time here. They got to figure out how much time on the clock. Now the line judge was the one to throw the beanbag. When the beanbag's thrown, that means he's seeing it as a fumble. After further review, the ball broke the plane of the goal line prior to coming loose. It is a touchdown. Well, Mark D'Antonio's been here before. Down two scores last week to Wisconsin. They came back to win. And they do it today, though, against a Nebraska defense that has been outstanding so far. Second rushing touchdown for Rex Burkhead, 12th rushing score of the season, making a push to be an all Big Ten first team running back. And Maher makes it 17 to 3, Nebraska. If the Cornhuskers win this game, there could be a four-way tie atop the Legends division. Iowa, Michigan, Michigan State, Nebraska with one loss. Still a lot of football left here, though, in Lincoln. 17-3 Nebraska as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championships. Second rushing touchdown today for Rex Burkhead. Taylor Martinez had zero passing yards. Before that drive, he was 4-4 four of four for 34 yards passing on 80-yard drive, aided by a Michigan State penalty to get Nebraska first down. Good job of Tim Beck calling easy passes, five-yard routes. Little pitch and catch for Taylor Martinez. A short kick here to be fielded by Nick Hill. And Hill out to the 28-yard line. Take a look back, our Liberty Mutual Drive recap. Martinez finding Burkhead, that delayed pitch. That resulted in a first down. Martinez with a run of his own, and then the pitch to Burkhead. And got it across. It's a touchdown. Don't forget, they face a third and long because of a personal, personal foul penalty. They were able to keep the drive alive with 15. The first down. Kirk Cousins just 4-15 passing, 27 yards. It'll run it here, and Bell with a good pickup out to the 35-yard line. So it's a gain of eight. Guys, if you're Michigan State, you've been here before. Last week, down two scores, they came back to win. How do you handle this offensively? Well, you wonder if the wear and tear is starting to show. This does not look like this. We did Michigan State two weeks ago. Completely different team. Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin. They look like they're... They're out of their, their mojo that they had going for three weeks. So what do you do? How do you get it back? That's what they just did. Run the ball up the middle and throw the ball in the middle. That's the weakness of the two-shell look. Here's Bell. Got the first down. So consecutive running plays. 
And they pick up chunks on both. Chris Spielman's exactly right. They are Michigan's, uh, Nebraska's defense from the first play until middle of the third quarter now. They are daring them to run the football. And Michigan State came out with two well, successful runs. It's where you run it, and it's where you throw it. You don't run to the outside against too deep. You run it inside. And that's what they're doing. Now let's see. You keep pounding it because they have a too deep look here. Michigan State last in the Big Ten in rushing offense so far this year. Play action for Cousins. A lot of downfield throws. And this one almost picked off by Dennard, who's had a terrific game defending B.J. Cunningham. Here's the, here's the problem. They're, they're not in sync for this reason. Because the receivers and quarterback aren't recognizing what a matchup zone is. You must treat a matchup zone like man coverage. That means don't sit your route down. Keep running across. It's creating separation because as soon as somebody comes into their zone, the Nebraska defenders are latching them and playing man. It's a great concept and well coached by Bill Polini. And his brother Carl, older brother, who is the defensive coordinator, second and ten for MSU. Short setup, and Cousins finds his tight end Linthicum or hurdles a defender. He'll come up short of the first down and bring up third down at about three. It's a nice little pick route, Urban. Nice little pick route, and also well managed by Kirk Cousins, which he's done all year. You've gone from second and long now to third and very manageable, third and set, third and two. Run pass threat for the Nebraska defense. Let's see if they come out of there now. They'll probably come out of there too deep look and bring an eighth man in the box. And big Levy on Bell. Now this is strength on strength. Bell, a 235-pound running back. He's sneaking up. But Cousins will throw, and it's incomplete. Flag down there. Andrew Green defending B.J. Cunningham. It's been a quiet day for Cunningham. We didn't barely called his name. Pass interference. Defense number 11. Spot foul. Automatic first down. So Cunningham, who's been held without a catch today, interfered with on that play. That's a big penalty right here, and you see Green. Just getting there a little bit too early, and it's hard to do. But again, still not a lot of room to fit that ball in there for Kirk Cousins. Come back to the running game because you got to anticipate what these two guys are doing. Only seven right there. Run the ball in the middle of the field. By the way, Cunningham, 48 catches on the year. And zero today. They motion Martin over there with Cunningham on first down. And play action to nobody. The back wasn't over there. Now Cousins has to throw it away. Is that a broken play? Just the back went the wrong way, or Kirk went the wrong way. Either that or a sprint out. But I know I'm up in here in the box, and, and I see a lot of things. If you have seven guys in that box from tackle to tackle, and you have eight blockers, you outnumber them. Give the ball the back deep in the backfield. Let him pick and choose the open area because they're one man short. You're going to get four or five yards a pop, and your offensive linemen love it. Second down and 10 at the Nebraska 46. It's Bell trying to get outside. Keeps the feet moving to the 43 before Lance Terrell makes the stop. Third down and about seven coming up. Four down territory coach. In this situation, down two scores. Down two scores, you must, especially with Nebraska's style of offense they play. If Nebraska gets it going like they did against Ohio State in that second half, you're not going to get very, very many possessions. Coach Urban says, punt the ball. Broadcast Urban says, why not? Go for it. <laughs> Michigan State, three of ten on third down. They have to get to the 36 yard line. Nebraska rushes for Cousins in trouble. Sack at midfield. It's Eric Martin who gets him. Free speed right there, and Finotti gets off a little bit, and you see his hands stay active. Once you're stopped as a defensive lineman, you want to have a counter. His counter was a nice undercut, uppercut rip. A beautiful job. Only four-man pressure, Chris. That was a coverage sack. They did a great job in her inside matchup zone defense, which you've been talking about all day. 
Sadler has not had a very good day punting. This one, though, bounces inside the 15 and out of bounds at the 11 yard line. Nebraska's defense playing one of its better games of the season. Michigan State put up 37 points last week, but held to three so far in this one. ESPN's College Football, brought to you by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And Dr. Pepper, with 23 flavors, Dr. Pepper is always one of a kind. Two of the Nebraska legends, Bob Devaney and Tom Osborne. Osborne now the athletic director here at Nebraska. As his Cornhuskers lead Michigan State 17-3. And the football first down from their 11 yard line. Burkhead forward for about three yards. Robinson brings him down. You think what Tom Osborne did here at the University of Nebraska, 25 years a head coach, every year winning at least nine games, 25 straight bowl games. Most importantly, did it with class, integrity, and did it the right way. One of my all time favorite guys in college football. Yeah, we had a chance to visit with him yesterday, and actually Tim Beck visited with him and said, Coach, when they got nine in the box, what do I do? Tom Osborne said the words he never says. Pass. And I will put Burkhead in the game, the Wildcat position, and Burkhead keeping it. And he's pushed back at the 19 yard line. So we got five. It's going to bring up third down and short. Two score lead, Dave. It's going to be the Martinez Burkhead show, keeping the ball on the ground. Eat some clock, force Kirk Cousins to come back against the stout Nebraska defense. And Burkhead, 25 carries. So far in this ball game, he's earned every yard, two for 89 yards. Third down and two. Martinez will hand it off to Burkhead. Golston has him, but Burkhead may have gotten the first down with that second effort. Looks like he did. First down, Nebraska. You almost get the feeling of the old Halloween weekend sneaking up on Sparty again. I remember last year they're undefeated going to Iowa and Michigan State gets clubbed two years ago at Minnesota Michigan State wasn't as good but still a good team lost at Minnesota Burkhead in trouble reversing field and runs into Golston for a game about a yard Trenton Robinson there as well I mean, what do you point to there and I know it's not just the weekend but for Michigan State on the road in these big games well I, I mean it, to me it's coming off of, of four tough weeks or fourth game in a row it's also almost like there's a spell that's cast open from the witch of Endor or something where they just cast a spell over Michigan State and on this weekend they really haven't played well the past three years in a row second down and nine after that one yard game you snap the ball. If you get a guy jump and snap it. it. Might break your quarterback's hand, but it'll be all right. Burkett straight ahead to the secondary. 29 yard line. Six yard pickup brings up third down and about three. I think without question, it's the wear and tear of the schedule. When is there by week? The fact that Nebraska had an un undermanned Minnesota team that they played with the week before. Burkhead with five consecutive carries and now movement. There was contact by Jarrell Worthy. That might be another Michigan State penalty that gives Nebraska a first down. Well, Jarrell is pointing toward the guard as he, the guard might have drew him off sides. Prior to the snap, offside, defense, number 99. Five yard penalty results in a first down. How do you teach this? I mean, your team keeps doing this, so what do you say to him as a coach? Well, same thing from day one as a defensive lineman, you stare at the football. You don't go on the cadence, and obviously, their lack of discipline. Last week, they had zero penalties. Now, their penalties all over the field for Michigan well, State. Past two series, penalties by first downs that keep drives alive. Seven straight Rex Burkhead running plays. He's got 28 carries on the day. There's Burkhead again. Gets outside and finally dumped around the 40 yard line by Marcus Rush. Gain of a handful. Talked about coming in, Dave, the matchup. Michigan State's rush defense, 88.9 yards per game. Nebraska rush offense, 261 yards per game. And right now, their front is taking over Michigan State's tough, talented front. 
You look at their rush defense on the year, eighth in the country, and they're giving up twice as many rushing yards as they normally do. This might be a free play here, and Martinez airing it out, and a one-handed attempt and another flop. Bell could not come up with it. It's incomplete, but Darquez Denard interfered with them, and again, there might be an offside call on Kevin Pickleman back at the line of scrimmage. Michigan State has been penalized five times so far today after zero against Wisconsin. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, defense, number 91. That penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense, number 31. 15-yard penalty results in a first down. What Nebraska is doing is using a hard cadence. If they get a guy to jump off sides, Chris, it's a free play. Take a shot down the field, and number 31 just hanging on to the receiver. Yeah, Denard get a little nervous. Anytime a receiver gets behind you, you figure get the pass interference instead of giving up a touchdown. Boy, it looked like Burkhead moved there, and that's a flag. Yep. <laughs> good, good job of trying to sell it. All start. Offense. Number 22. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. So the Huskers gave five of it back. That'll put them back at their 49-yard line. First and 15. Taking a lot of time off the clock. Offense coordinator yesterday, Tim Beck, said they expect with their tempo and physical up front play to wear defenses down in the fourth quarter. You're starting to see that against a very good defensive front. Here's Burkhead trying to pick a hole. Drag down at the 45, so it's a six-yard gain. Ellsworth on the stop. Second and long coming up. Now you want to slow your tempo down. You're controlling the line of scrimmage. There's no need to snap the ball with 25 seconds. There's no problem with letting that shot clock or play clock run down to about five, ten seconds. Basketball is being locked out. I said that for your benefit, David. Play clock. Second and nine. How about the last nine Nebraska plays have been running plays by Burkhead? Well, Martinez faking, and Martinez inside the 20. There are flags down, and Martinez finally tackled at the 6, but this one's coming back. There's an injured Spartan downfield. Trenton Robinson. Now check that. It's Denard. Robinson also shaken up. So he had two starting defensive backs for Michigan State hurt on that play that is going to be negated because of a Nebraska penalty. Now if Denard goes out, we'll see. Holding, Holding. Offense. offense, number 18. 10-yard penalty, second down. That's on a Nunwa for the hold. And again, two Michigan State players shaken up. Robinson is up. They're still looking at Denard. Timeout. Michigan State's D needs to step up when we come back. Back in Lincoln, where Nebraska is in command, 17-3 over Michigan State. Four of the nation's top teams in action today on the ESPN Networks on ABC at 8 Eastern. you got Andrew Luck and Stanford taking on USC. Also, Clemson, Georgia Tech. Oklahoma, Kansas State follows us on ESPN. Badgers, Buckeyes tonight from Columbus. After a holding penalty that negated a big gain at second and ten for Nebraska, and another penalty flag. Is that Burkhead again who moved? This time it might have been a wide receiver. False start. Offense. Number 80. Five-yard penalty. Second down. There's Kenny Bell. So now it's second and 15. Boy, Nebraska giving Michigan State a wonderful opportunity here to get a stop, get the ball back. Keep it as a two-possession game. Here's Burkhead. And he is able to get away from a defender. Gets to the 46. So third down and about 10 coming up. Tony Lippett on the stop. What's the call here? They've run it almost every play. Do you stick with that or do you let Martinez throw it as Burkhead is shaken up right now for Nebraska? 31 attempts today for Rex Burkhead. He has been their offense in this ball game and for a good part of the season. See the concerned look of... Bo Pelini, you don't want to lose one of your war warriors, and that's what Rex Burkhead is, a pure warrior. I'll tell you what, if he's down, that changes your play call right there. That's the 
One thing I would do is I'd come back to that little fade route, the fade stop. If you're seeing press coverage by the corners, and hopefully it's just a cramp, 31 carries. Sometimes a guy can cramp up. See him pop up. But he's got to come out for this play until he's clear to return. Mm -hmm. So third down and 11. And you see uh, him favoring that left leg. They've got other backs. So do you keep it on the ground? Or do you let Martinez throw? Well, I think you have your play action passing game, and the safeties from Michigan State are sneaking up there. So that's something off the look that they've been running that little read option where you're reading that defensive end. You kind of run that read option, drop back, and if you got the post, throw it. If not, throw it away. And you punt the ball. You have really nothing to lose, but remember, only throw it, Taylor, where your guy can get it and nobody else. Crowd here in Lincoln appreciates Rex Burkhead, a junior from Plano, Texas, who Texas A&M and Stanford really were the other schools interested other than Nebraska. Third down and 11 officially. Playing a little soft zone now, a little different. You're going to see right here if the Nebraska coaches have confidence in Taylor Martinez taking care of the ball. Let him throw. It's a short pass underneath, and it's caught. First down, Kenny Bell inside the 30-yard line of Michigan State. They pick up third and 11. You know, this is where they checked Urban to the line of scrimmage. Why wow, they saw soft zone, so what do you go to a little split screen? Look at the offensive line setting the tempo out there, setting the wall, little tunnel screen. Closing in on the final moments of the third quarter as Martinez is going to throw it deep. A defender falls down, but unable to make the catch in the end zone was Kyler Reed. And he also may have hurt himself on the play. A Spartan defender went down at the five. Kyler Reed had six, and he could make the grab. Vintage Tom Osborne. 20 years ago, that's the belly G pass. See the front side guard pull, fake to the fullback. Trying to get the play action, get the safeties down. Pick by Nunwu. Well executed. There's Isaiah Lewis going down. Catchable pass, not, not a great throw, but Reed could have caught it. That's the play we called for on third and 10, but they ran it on first and 10. Great call by Beck. How about Tom Osborne yesterday? We sat and met with him, and he said, I'm starting to recognize some of these plays that I used to run. That play right there. Everybody in college football was studying 15 to 20 years ago. The belly G option pass. Very hard to defend. How many teams in college football other than Nebraska run it today in 2011? Georgia it, Tech? No, not, they don't run the belly G. The belly G is really hard because nowadays the guards are so big, you don't pull them very often. And so to pull the guard and log the end, I'm saying under five, maybe three or four teams in America run the belly G option series. Well, Rex Rex had to win the dive option. Dive option, yeah. Rex Rex back in the guard. game here, guys. See if they get it to him again. He's got 31 attempts in the ball game. Oh, Martinez looking to throw down deep again. This time it's caught. It's Burkhead. Touchdown, Nebraska. The last time we saw Burkhead, he was hobbling off the field. Two plays later, he's in the end zone. Boy, is Tim Beck, offense coordinator for Nebraska, done a great job in the second half, changing up the play calls, completely different from the first half. 12 play, 89 yard drive that was capped by that touchdown pass, Martinez to Burkhead, 27 yards. Third touchdown today, first receiving touchdown today, and the point after makes it 24 to 3 in Nebraska. Little run action fake to Burkhead. He sneaks out of the backfield on a wheel route. Number one will run a post to clear out the corner and the safety. Catch him in man coverage, safety's down. Well executed play. You get Ellsworth, who's playing him man to man, loses sight of him on the fake. Burkhead did a good job of patience running the corner. Taylor Martinez did not rush the throw. Threw a little fadeaway off the back foot. No problem, though. Effective. Chris, you got to give credit to, oh, once again, I keep going back to the play calling in the second half has been dynamic. You call a tunnel screen on.
And then that play action pass once you hit the red zone. He's done a great job calling the second and half. We saw those adjustments of the second half of the Ohio State game where Tim Beck made the offensive adjustments necessary and Burkhead and Martinez took over that half. That's a great football. point. Great point. How about this? This quarter, Michigan State has run seven total plays. Burkhead has touched it 15 times alone. 14 rushes, one reception. It is all Nebraska with just over a quarter remaining. Michigan State needs a big play either from Nick Hill here or on offense. And Hill will take it out to the 27. We go to the studio in Reese Davis. David, it's starting to look like we are going to have a very crowded top of the leaderboard in the Legends Division. Fitzgerald Toussaint is going to go 59 yards through the Purdue defense. Michigan is rolling against the Boilermakers. They're up 36 to 7. It's on ESPN2. Under 10 minutes to go in the game. So, Reese, that would get Michigan to 3-1. and one. If Nebraska wins, then Nebraska and Michigan State both 3-1. and one. Iowa plays later against Minnesota. They could get to 3-1 and one as well and have a four-way tie atop the Legends. Reversing field is Baker, and he appears to have a first down out to the 38-yard line. That will be the final play, you would think, of the first quarter. The Spartans, or the third quarter rather, excuse me, Spartans down three scores going to the fourth. Do they have the firepower to come back and keep this magical season alive? It'll be on his shoulders, Kirk Cousins. Michigan State scored 37 on Wisconsin last week. Only three today against Nebraska setting up. If Nebraska hangs on, it could be a four-way tie atop the Legends division. Michigan and Iowa play next week. Michigan State has to still go to Iowa. Iowa still has to come here to play Nebraska. But 15 minutes left, maybe Sparty can mount a comeback. They'll run Baker, and he's got good yardage here up near the first down. Thorell and Green on the tackle about a yard about Nebraska's defense. They've had about three or four calls all day on defense. They're running the same defense every snap. It's like they've, they're so well prepared for Michigan State's offense. You can see it throughout the day. You got John Baptiste just locking in here at corner, just checked in late. They might want to test him. He's battling an injury. They aren't sure if he was even going to play. But they run Baker, and he's got the first down. Dumped at midfield by Stafford. So a fresh set of downs for Michigan State. Are you going to hurry up if you're the Spartans? That's I would not be. what they do normally. I would because you don't know when you're going to get the ball back because of the ball control that Nebraska's had in the third quarter, and they could carry it over. So you got to get a little bit of sense of urgency about you if you're Sparty. It's a three-score game, David. There's no question you have to start thinking that way. The emotion, Le'Veon Bell out of the backfield. So just a fullback, Ty Anderson back there. And Cousins to throw, going to his fullback, and not much there. Anderson dropped immediately by a linebacker, Levante David. Minimal gain, and the clock continues to run. Michigan State looks like it's going to huddle again. We talked about the key to the game, and, and you talked about it, but the key to the game to me has been the fact that Nebraska's defenders are all over the receivers of Michigan State. There's no separation created, so Kirk Cousins, no matter what the protection is, has nowhere to go with the ball. Lionel right Motion Cousins out wide left, and they've got Le'Veon Bell in there as the Wildcat quarterback. And it's a reverse back to Cousins, looking to throw. Keyshawn Martin's wide open. Martin caught it at the 30-yard line and tackled at the 29. Finally, a big play for Michigan State's offense. Denner did a good job defensively to get over there and take down Martin. We see Martin right here. Now he's just going to continue on. Take a look. It's a good job of executing. You're bringing this guy, Sims, over here to draw the defenders into safeties, which leaves space for Keyshawn Martin to work. But that's what you have to do to create space is double reverse passes. No good. Two minutes into the fourth. Michigan State down three scores. Baker on the run. Ankle tackled by Levante David of the 26. David last year with a school record for tackles. Michigan State offense, anything less than a touchdown is not good enough. So you are officially in four down territory the rest of the game. You have to come away with seven points here. And they huddle, so another 15 or 20 seconds took away. Empty backfield for second and seven. 
B.J. Cunningham has been shut out today. Timeout Nebraska. The coaches told us they wanted to stop Cunningham. That was the first thing and the most important thing they had to do. And they've succeeded so far. Twenty four three Nebraska as we continue Dr. Pepper's road to the championships and several key conference matchups featured today on the ESPN networks another one of the Big Ten tonight from Columbus on ESPN it's Ohio State and Wisconsin what the dichotomy between Clemson's offense and Georgia Tech's offense a That's good game on the ABC at 8 Eastern how about Kirk Cousins 55 yards passing he averages 230 per game had a pick on the opening series, has not been able to rebound. Cousins rolling out here, going for nickel, incomplete and nearly intercepted by Levante David. Go back again to Nebraska's defense. They run the same defense almost every snap. I've counted three different calls that I've seen that they run, and it's a matchup zone. The coordinator, Carl Pelini, and Bo, they do a great job. Understand the concepts that Michigan State's trying to run and defended it. They defended their pass game as well as anybody has all year. Just made a little C mark with his hand. That indicates cloud coverage. That means corners play tough. You have help over the top with your safeties. Third and seven. Nebraska with no down linemen. They still rush four. And Cousins in trouble. And he's going to get sacked. He'll lose about five. It's Eric Martin again. The Russian four defensive linemen. That's a coverage sack once again. There's not one receiver open for Michigan. He's got State. a little bit of a stunt going here. Martin starts outside, then will come underneath. This is well coached and well documented. Watch up here. It comes Martin underneath. See that? It's a nice little pick. The offensive tackle and man protection could not get to him. And you have Martin just closing in and making a big play for his Husker defense. Michigan State has to go for it. Down three scores, fourth and 13. They have to get to the 19 of Nebraska. And Le'Veon Bell calls a timeout. So the Spartans will talk it over. Fourth down and 13 when you come back to Lincoln. Back in Lincoln, ESPN's Nebraska. college football is presented by Cars.com where confidence comes standard and in part by Dodge. Visit your local Dodge dealer today. Fourth down 13 to go for Michigan State. Nebraska in command can maybe seal the deal for all intents and purposes with a stop here. Cousins just 7 of 21 passing for 55 yards. Nebraska rushes for Cousins to Martin at the 25. Trying to get the first down. He did. He steps out at the 18-yard line. Some poor angles by Alfonso Denard, number 15. Wants to angle on the tackle right there. No burst, no change of direction. You know one thing, if you watch Keyshawn Martin all this year, one thing he does is he can get from 0 to 60 in a hurry. And it did not look like he stepped out at the 25. Did eventually after we got the first down. So fresh set of downs for the Spartans in the red zone. Owen Baker down to the 15. And Will Compton in on the stops again a three. Dave, you have to get in a hurry up on mode right now. You're, you're ten and a half minutes left down, two score, three scores. You have to start thinking about hurry up offense for Michigan State. No, I, I think they're I think they're five minutes late getting in the hurry up, to be honest with you. Don't the coaches see that, though? Why, why not do it? I, I don't know. I'm saying I would do it. We have to ask them. It's been a five-minute drive, 11th play, and they got Le'Veon Bell in as the Wildcat quarterback here. They motion Keyshawn Martin again. Bell will keep this time one-on-one -on -one with a DB, and a penalty marker down. Bell is still running, and Bell's got blockers in front. Oh, Bell gets a great block, and Bell is inside the 10 to the 5. And finally knocked out of bounds around the one yard line. Now, if they call this correctly, it'll be a face mask on Le'Veon Bell. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 24 on the offense. 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Yeah, he, Andrew Green had him. And Bell trying to get away from him grabbed the face mask of Green. 
Again, that's a non-disciplined penalty, a non-forced error by Michigan State, who's given up at least three first downs on penalties. And now you take an excellent effort in a big play by Le'Veon Bell. Must have the discipline to let go. And yet you're holding on and jerking them away from you. So now you're back at the 30-yard line, and it's second down and 22. Inside 10 minutes to go. Michigan State trailing 24 to 3. Cousins to pass a screen to Bell, gets a block. Bell at the 25 and finally dropped at the 20. Got 10 of it back. It'll bring up third down and 12. Chase Rome on the stop downfield for Nebraska. Where do you go? A lot of teams, when they see a too deep look, and we've talked about it all day, they like to attack the middle of the field because you usually have a speed receiver. If you can get a matchup on a linebacker, you want to attack in between the two safeties since Nebraska's safeties have been playing extra wide to help out on those two guys. And a shutdown Cunningham, no catches. Keyshawn Martin has not really been effective either. Cousins hit it, his feet. Flag down, Cousins completes it to his fullback, Anderson, and Levante David right there with him. See what the penalty flag is, thrown in the area of offensive holding. That's what it is. And we'll see if Pelini declines or accepts. Holding, offense, number 63, 10-yard penalty. Third down. So now it's third down and 22 rather than fourth and 12 because he accepts the penalty. Travis Jackson, the center. Take a look. See where the holding occurs. Oh, that's hold. Hey, they're all covered. You can see both receivers. You get double coverage on all the three eligible receivers from Michigan State. That's once again a coverage sack which you have Nebraska. You have no speed threatening the middle linebacker in that two coverage. No speed to stretch the field in the middle to split the safeties. Third down and 22. Cousins breaks a tackle and he'll take off. Get inside the 20, down to the 17. It'll bring up fourth down at about nine. Number one threat for Michigan State, according to Nebraska, was B.J. Cunningham. Zero catches today. Boy, this would be an opportune time for him to step up and make a play. He's on the backside of trips. Chris, they're running the same coverage every snap. It's that matchup zone they talked about. You have three over two in the boundary, four over three to the field. Now, Keyshawn Martin here to take the more of the field. Cousins on fourth and nine, and it's broken up. No flag. Nebraska takes over on downs. Keyshawn Martin was the intended receiver. Justin Blatchford on the coverage. Nebraska football and a 24-3 lead when we come back. Michigan State, as we mentioned, on Halloween weekend, on the road, the last two years has lost, including last year, thumped by Iowa, coming into that game unbeaten. And we're riding high going into this game as Nebraska hands it off here to Burkhead, who gets taken down after a gain of one. But it looks like another road loss for Sparty. Guys, how much of it was the schedule? How much of it is coming off that emotional win and the players hearing all week of the Big Ten. No question that's an issue. The other issue is because I've been in this situation before. How do you handle your team at midnight last week? They're almost going overtime against one of the most physical teams in America. Nebraska went against a very undermanned team in Minnesota. How do you practice on Tuesday and Wednesday? Do you go out and go hard, go physical when you know your guys are beat up? I think that has the biggest issue to do with it as anything. Played Ohio State on the road. As Burkhead has running room in the first down. There's a penalty flag down, likely coming back. They played Ohio State on the road and won that game. They don't beat Ohio State on the road. That was an emotional victory. Then they come back home 
playing Michigan in that great rivalry game. They knock off the Wolverines. Then a night game. Game day. All that going on in East Lansing. And they take care of Wisconsin. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 84. 84. 10-yard penalty. Second down. That's, that's number two on him. Chris, in college football, because the offenses are so different each every week, Tuesday and Wednesday practices are so critical. And if you go out there with injured bodies, guys that are tired, guys being told they're better than they are, that's, that's I think, what's happened to Michigan State right now. And that's what you get paid uh, millions of dollars to do, is manage those situations and manage people. I mean, I can go around in college football, put every coach that I know on a chalkboard. He's going to tell me what to do and how to do it. The difference is, how do you get your players to play at a high level every single week, no matter what the challenge? That's what championship teams do. That's what championship coaches do. Mike Caputo starting center, former walk-on, shaken up. Cole Pensick is his backup. Visited with Mike yesterday. His dad used to bring him to games. From Omaha. Yeah. Dreamed of being a Husker. Now in Nebraska, you look at how they're set up now. With a win today, improving to seven and one, three and one in the Big Ten. Potential four-way tie top the Legends division as Burkhead carries for the 34th time. Well, we'll look at Nebraska's schedule a little bit later. Let's check out what Michigan State has left. Uh, this loss uh, today, if uh, ends up being a defeat, certainly would hurt. But look, you got Minnesota, Indiana at home. At Northwestern, looks like the Wildcats are going to get their first Big Ten win today. At Iowa, November 12th. Hawkeyes crushed them last year. So of the teams in the Legends division, they would appear to have the easiest when you compare it with Michigan, who still has to play Ohio State and Nebraska. Nebraska still has to play Penn State and Iowa. And Burkhead on the carry, 35th attempt. Golston brings him down. First thing I do, Chris, right now is Burkhead, take your helmet off. You're done for yeah. the day. I mean, you, you don't need to be giving him 40 carries after this one. Got a timeout, 545 left. He'll jog to the sideline. His team up 24-3. Nebraska on top of Michigan State, under six to go, 24-3. Four of the top nine teams in the country can be seen on the ESPN networks. Don't forget Oklahoma, Kansas State up next year on ESPN. Tonight, you got Wisconsin, Ohio State. On ABC, Stanford, USC, Clemson, Georgia Tech. Big games on the ESPN networks, including this one. Nebraska, Michigan State, one of just two matchups involving ranked B Huskers today. They're punting here in fourth down. And for the block, and this is a booming kick. Takes off up the sideline, stepped out from Reese Davis. All right. My Discover card, Carl Edwards is going to start from the Phil Sun. Name washed out qualifying. He's the points leader. So he gets Illinois and Penn State on ABC and ES. Here is Get State College. They say it's the first time they've had since 1896. They started keeping records. Oh, the snow there in Happy Valley. Beautiful bell catch. Packed in bounds by Andrew. Their Prince of Mucamara, draft the New York Giants. They move the receiver, Stanley Jones. And he gets practice. So you're playing with some backups. Now to catch. Michigan sticks here. Around Andrew Gritt, standing in the backup, filling the role. And game. Cameron Meredith with the sack. At the corner, not one time today about there's off help or inside, outside help. Up zone, blues I've seen. It's the best scene in two years. 13, Cousins. Time to come. The flag's fourth down. The coaches in their law had to figure out the big, big 12, the down stop. Now that they've found how good can this, where can they go? I think they're very good. How good is Michigan? They did down today to run down here. You're sure. Uh, the thing is, with just Derry, you have not seen any of separation statewide of brass Cornhuskers. 20 back down for Michigan, too. Time for a look brought to you by NT. Offense and look at the run by the Stanford receivers. They have five in the rally. Look at set on USC to only for circling and a lot of heat. He's got to try to get to the luck loose, puts it in the one place to stick up. But it does. SC will have to do that off tonight on it. Luck is the best quarterback in college ball. Boy, I should have later right here. Foul quarterback. That's bias, I think. Two championships. See what it's always. He's a great quarterback. Quarterback, but projecting to the NFL. Since Perry said that he was a really good. Just efficient to college. Michigan's in four, dude. Four down. And it's short. Ask to take him with a catch. 
Nebraska ball. Little hook in it, Dave. Again, Brown sticks. And for Nebraska coming into this game, a win for catch. Just forces left drive and maintain the points. See while Kevin Harvick tries to rebound with the tiny the chain. Brink up confused at Martinsville, Sun on Eastern, and the, for the last division title of the Big Ten to the final. Penn State and Law lead. They still got Columbus and Madison. Green. And, and you think about Nebraska, they still got a win in their first defense. Well, today, so Michigan said the last week's has been rolled. I tell you, also put you back in to make the champion of some cup quarter map, especially the defense where they're at. Taylor Marball. Third freshman from Braden. Bradenton is the backup, but there's this. Did pull the 35 carry yards. Here it again. Down. Stop it. So Nebraska has left today. Turn it home. Look at back to the games. In happy at mid scene, it always is. So with the fact Nebraska wins a Iowa on the Friday after the C in circle last reason. I would quite six and one. Should want if they against Minnesota today. Their team historic gets better goes on. It'd be a great game there. Iowa has Michigan State and Iowa State in Texas. Michigan State can't stop the clock. Here, one thing about kids, Michigan played at home. Michigan State did the enthusiasm. They were a for some reason. Came out flat, played flat in Nebraska. But you schedule don't devalue home game, road game. Especially players. Mm -hmm. Hard hurt for the jog on my soul return. We thought Wisconsin was the team. And who knew who is the best team right now? Still. But the Michigan State, the, yes, they did lose. Eight, and, oh, and they had it breaks, and they took it. Velden took me my if making a judgment on who the best team, the best team. Had. After that, it's a toss up. Fourth down and three. Right, down and play in the first down of its side area. The penalty for Chris at Wisconsin. I think it's which team's answering that go either way. Then they can't have state defense. Offside defense, five yard penalty result in a first down. Right. State's been doing Nebraska downs on penalties. Nebraska in a way from ending this thing. State can up the clock. Ohio State, Ohio State is struggling offensively. You're going to have the opinion to beat Wisconsin. So they've down over. So I'm thinking if they go in there and really work on the extra middle off early as far as three depth, five, or hit you a little swing scenes or anything to help on. When if they can't throw it, it'd be tough to handle. Her attack lock keeps Michigan State cannot stop it. The big two. In the Big Ten, now that you add conference championship game with division, and every drastic call to the Big Ten, you got huge down in tonight with Wisconsin State. It's a weekend coming up where you got Nebraska, Ohio State. Weekend, Iowa, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio State was. Make no mistake now, the difference was bowl game. And not huge for your band, huge for your bands, and it counts. And yeah. Polini is jogging over for Bill Callahan. Remember, he was the interim played mid in the Alamo Bowl. They beat the Spartans. Job, and when he went on success as a defensive coordinator, Oklahoma, he gets back to Lane as the head coach, wins at least. He'll get win for seven. He's handle Michigan State 20. Ask Michigan State. Michigan, Atlanta, it's what three in Minnesota. They have four teams in the division. Three of those teams have each other in the month. College football. Kessnick standing by with Coach Pelini. Coach Pelini, the uh, best characterize the play of your second. Uh, they rose to the challenge. They, uh, I think they, they really how good they can be when they do. It's the key offense at halftime. You know, we got shit. We catch some play. We, we mixed it up a little bit more. I got and uh, we ate a lot of clock in that second half. What's it like now? We all hunt. And uh, we know it's a good challenge. But we can't. Uh, it doesn't stop at a challenge. 24 to from the ending made its first conference long ball. Football score presented by Acura has been a for ESPN, the worldwide lead. Now Urban Mind casting our entire outs ESPN day. So long for Ken where Nebraska beats Michigan.